Hey guys, Niggle here. Got another rare Pepe for you. Just picked this TV up. It was about a three hour drive curb find. I saw it on Facebook Marketplace. And it was a long way, but I knew I'd be kicking myself if I didn't pick it up because it's pretty rare. What's rare about it is it's a uh, standard definition Sony consumer set with a curved screen and component inputs um, which is something you don't really run across. What it is is a uh, Sony KV35XBR48 and I believe this is the only line of consumer American Sony's that is curved glass with component inputs and um, the benefit of the curved glass is that the geometry on it is typically better than a flat screen which I've noticed to be the case with this guy it's got pretty good geometry it's also a really good looking TV. It's black, it's not silver. I don't have one of the silver Sony's in here right now, but I think this is kind of the pinnacle of consumer sets. As far as design, it does kind of have a feel of perfection about it as far as, I mean, it's not the best TV ever, but it does feel like it was kind of the, the pinnacle of consumer sets for the time and uh, one thing I noticed about it is the colors on it pop really good um, this has a jungle chip in it that handles the video whereas the flat screens don't have a jungle chip I forget the name of it but it's a chip that tries to do multiple things at once and doesn't doesn't do as good a job from what I've read and from what I've seen myself I'm inclined to think that's true um, just the colors on this and just something about the video quality of it it just really pops let's see if I can give a good example all right so I got children of Adam pulled up this is a game I feel is really good looking. It's got really good colors and can kind of demonstrate how sharp the screen is. Let's see, I'll put a coin in. It's looking kind of hard to watch with, with the attract mode on. So the colors on it look really good. It has a look to it similar to a PVM. It just it looks different than the flat panels in a good way. Now the scan lines aren't as big or as thick as like a BVM, but they're about as thick as my 20 inch PVM 2030. I like thick scan lines. Um, for comparison, let's see here. We'll uh, look at that, and then I got my BVM over here. It's a BVM 1911. It's a 900 TVL BVM. And, you know, those scan lines, I think, are a bit, a little thicker than than the XBR, but not by too much. And how you get thick scan lines is you either have better horizontal resolution, uh, often measured in TV lines or dot pitch, or you have a larger screen. So even a low resolution TV is going to have scan lines if it uh, it's a big enough screen. And this is a 35 inch screen, so 
that helps to get helps to get big thick scan lines. So I've got the menu pulled up on this. And uh, one interesting thing about this this TV is that it works different than a flat screen and that the adjustments you make on the menu to make it look good are different um, than you would say on a flat screen Sony um, CRT like typically here's the sharpness I got the sharpness turned pretty high on a, a flat screen I'd have this sharpness turned down low to make it look good. And um, it's just easier to look good as far as these settings. Like, there's kind of like one way to make a flat screen Sony look good. You gotta turn the, the picture and the brightness down as usual on a CRT, but you gotta turn the sharpness down too. You have to turn basically all of its like features off. Like, let's see here, on a flat screen, you want to turn like the Trinitrone, or what is it, Trinitone off, or set it to NTSC basically. And then the color correction you're going to want off. You're going to want to turn everything off, have the color kind of down, and uh, really not push it too much to get a good picture out of it. On this, it actually looks better, I think, with the Trinit Trin Trinitone on, which is unusual. Another cool thing about this is you can, let me get out of here, you can adjust the yoke, the screen tilt in the menu here. You know, tilt correction, it's at negative five. Let's see if you can actually, I don't know if you can notice the screen tilting. Probably not. But it's tilting, it's just hard to pick up with uh, with my camera here. I'll go into a grid pattern and kind of see if I can demonstrate that and a couple other things. But yeah, I saw um, a Reddit where a guy was saying, Oh, my XBR48's uh, screen's tilted. Uh, how do I fix it? And he went in and turned the yoke. You don't need to do that, probably. I guess if it was off really bad, you'd have to do that. But a lot of high-end Sonys do have a tilt correction in the menu. Um, the flat screen Sony's have a tilt correction. I believe it's called um, NOTC, something like that in the uh, service menu. Well, I guess I can show you how to get into the service menu here. It's basically the same as a flat screen and all of these older um, standard def Sony's. You hit, you turn it off and then you hit display, five, volume up and then power on in sequence somewhat quickly and then uh, there it is service and to cycle through you hit one and four to cycle through the different service menu options you can see it switching on the top right H position H size that's one and four and then to actually set values or change values see H positions at 15 you hit um, three and six on the controller here. So H position's 15. Ah, it's not doing it. Oh, it's probably maxed out at 15, that's right. Now I got it moving over zero, 15. And to save, you hit um, mute followed by enter to save all your settings. So if you hit mute, it's going to say right at the top. And then if I was to hit enter now, it would save everything. It's going to go away on its own here. Come on. Well, it's not going away. But anyways, if you hit enter, it'll save your settings. And then if you don't want to save or if you went in there and totally jacked your geometry and, oh, I messed up. How do I get back to normal? Just uh, power it off. And I would unplug it myself and then plug it back in. I don't know what the deal is, but sometimes just powering it off doesn't seem to do the trick. And you got to unplug it. So, um, back to what I was saying. Um, let me pull up a grid pattern on here and, and show you how the geometry looks. Okay. Here's the grid pulled up. And 
it looks really good you can see it's looking at it on my camera I'm kind of having a hard time finding anything maybe the top right corner looking at it in person there there's a little bit of bowing like right right in this region there's a little bow there's absolutely nothing you're gonna see while gaming or watching movies it's just the the cross pattern fetish people or would probably have some kind of issue with it but uh any gamer or movie watcher is not going to have a problem now this doesn't have um, like a voltage regulator like say a, a 310 would have like a KV 310 it's KV FV 310s they have like a voltage regulator so that if you turn up say the picture on this it'll start blooming in the middle there I don't know if it's picking it up but uh, basically you can't turn the picture up too high on this without distorting geometry and causing problems you can see maybe the lines get a little jagged and it, it doesn't like it it's not it's not very clean um, like a prosumer what they call them like consumer but prosumer CRTs will have like a voltage regulator and you won't notice things like that when you turn the picture up it won't distort anything I do have a Mitsubishi like that and I did a video on it's more of like a prosumer this really isn't that I've heard people say like oh those XBRs are like prosumer CRTs I mean, it's a great CRT but it's not that I will say when I opened it up um, the technology on the boards it did look pretty pretty fancy like compared to like this D series over here those are super basic inside there's like one board and a power board and that's about it and then on these you got several boards in there I don't even know what all of them do and it's just really clean how it's designed I will say a mark against it is there weren't a lot of pots on it to adjust I'm not gonna open it up for you guys this was actually a pain to open up and in fact um, first time I opened it up and I blew it out I actually blew off a resistor on it and had to get my board tech to fix it um, first time I've ever had that happen but uh, I'm not gonna open it right now um, but when I did open it the only adjustments you could make was like a focused adjustment and a screen adjustment and that was it um, much like this D series over here you know like the BVM has millions of pots to adjust on it I mean not millions but it has a lot and then most flat screen Sony's will have two focused adjustments one for horizontal focus and one for vertical and they'll have a uh, convergence adjustments on the neck board so you can adjust like horizontal and vertical convergence and also maybe top and bottom have geometry adjustments there's a lot you can do to fix a flat screen Sony this doesn't have that which was disappointing but there's really nothing to correct so it's not that big of a deal um, let me um, see if I can pull it out and show you guys the back of it all right sorry about this guys this is about as a uh, much as I can pull it out just wanted to show you there KV 35 XB XBR 48 manufactured date 1998 on the back here oh man, let me see if I can focus on this sorry guys so of course we got the all-important sound like um, RGB Rob <laughs> the all-important component he would say all-important RGB but of course I got a transcoder converting my computers RGB to component so it's basically RGB but uh, yeah it's component and then uh, you got your composite there's a S video composite on the front but who cares right all we really need is that those component inputs there and I believe it has a audio out on it which I like yeah there's an audio out on it sometimes I can mess around with my hi-fi stereo I mean this has nice speakers on it that was one reason it was hard to take apart is because it uh 
Let me turn my flashlight off here. It was hard to take apart because it has these fancy speaker boxes around it. And I think that's the main feature of these XBRs is they have nice they have nice sound, which I don't really care because I have a hi-fi stereo. You know. Um, so I'm plugging into that. But uh yeah, it's got it's got another set of inputs on here. This video. This video is good. I just I'm doing the RGB component thing. Let's see. Um I think I'm gonna push the TV back and then maybe give some final thoughts on it. Well, before I give my final thoughts, one more thing I wanted to show is that I got this hooked up to my computer with CRT MU driver and so this is getting a 480i I'm, I'm outputting 480i for my desktop computer um, to this TV and not all TVs like that like but this one is the best out of all the TVs I've ever had and I've had my BVM PVMs I've probably had like five or six CRTs hooked up to my computer and this one handles it the best like that's a pretty rock-solid image like there's very little interlacing jitter like you can't even see it right now with this this camera and sometimes some like my BVM it's got quite a bit of jitters to the point where you don't want to watch movies or YouTube's on it like yeah once you go over and you're playing games with RetroArch the jitters gone because then you're doing 240p but I watch a lot of movies and I basically use this as my media station so I need something with a rock solid image and this does it the best and from my experience so it's something about the aperture grill the Sony's do a really good job of that um, just for comparison I'll show you the JVC D hooked up to my computer and show you what it looks like when you're not getting a solid image when you're getting a jumpy crummy image Well, I got the D series hooked up to the computer now, and I thought I'd show you guys the terrible jumpy jitterness to the JVC, but the camera doesn't pick it up at all. You just have to take my word for it. I mean, it's unwatchable. It's interesting how the, like, you can't even, I'm looking at my camera, and it looks fine, and then you look at the image, and it's having a seizure. Like, it's shaking. It's bad. But whatever, that didn't work out. Um... Yeah, so we'll go back to the Sony and I'll give some final thoughts. Alright, so final thoughts on the uh, XBR here. It is my favorite consumer TV. Um, I've got flat screen Sony's 36, 27, 32 inch. I got a lot of TVs and this one's my favorite as far as consumer sets. It looks like a PVM as far as the colors and kind of the feel of the TV. Um, not as sharp as a PVM. I'll say it's as sharp as any of the other flat screen Sony's. The, like the 120 series or the, the teen series. It's not as sharp as a 300 consumer flat screen Sony. But I had a, I had a 32KV 300 before and that was sharper than this. But the colors didn't look as good, and there's there's a look to those that, that that's different than this. Um, I got used to the flat screens, and I thought I wouldn't like this because it has the curve. It's only curved in one direction in the XY plane, so like the tube of it is a cylinder. Um, it's not like the JVC that's curved in the XY. As um, I said, XY plane. This is curved in the X plane. It's not curved in the Y plane. Those are a, are a sphere. The JVC is a sphere. And uh, the, the CRT is an actual is spherical. This is cylindrical. Um, I think this is my preferred screen now. I actually like the curve more than the flat screens. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, the bubble tube, like a 36 inch JVC D, that's too much damn bubble. I mean, I mean, I still love the TV, but I wish it didn't have that much of a curve to it. The curve on this really isn't that noticeable. It's, it's got a charm to it. Um, so yeah, that's about all I got to say. Hope you guys can uh, maybe find one and, and play one for yourself. Have a good day, guys.